tried to warn them. They didn't listen. Yeah! Every week, the Hoffman Show goes into the belly of the beast. We read those comments, baby! Never read the comments. All right, you know how this works. We chop up the show into itsy bitsy, not actually itsy bitsy, but uh, digestible pieces. We place those segments on the internet. You can watch them on YouTube at the Team 980 or at Craig Hoffman. And uh, actually, one more place that we'll talk about a little bit later with one comment in particular. But at Craig Hoffman, at the Team 980, we pull the best comments, sometimes the worst, and we talk about them here on the radio show. Anything else we should say before we dive in, Anthony? Uh, I think you covered all bases. All right. Safety goggles on. Time to go into the comments section. Uh, We start with just a funny one. Uh, Gail Naoki, 8765. Comment something apparently I said in my takeaways from uh, OTAs yesterday. Uh, Said, were you there in 82 Theismann, 87 Williams, and 91 Rippin? And I replied... Defined there, but either way, the answer is no for the first two because I was born in 1990. I just, I felt like making whoever this person was feel old because I often feel old these days. You are. Thanks. Jerk. Uh, Anthony wasn't there for any of them. So there's that. Okay, to the actual comments now. <laughs> wow, we're, we're, it's a punchy Thursday here at the Hoffman Show. Okay, uh, at... Seth Santana 9477 says, I think we're overreacting on Emmanuel Forbes. Been a lot of Emmanuel Forbes discourse this week. I think we're overreacting on Emmanuel Forbes. Dan Quid said, throw away the depth chart right now, which I, of course, know he said that because I'm the one who asked him the question about that. I I think some folks are overreacting about Emmanuel Forbes. Um, I would also say that there's some of us who have been kind of questioning that since the second he was drafted. Like, I get the appeal of Emmanuel Forbes. I think there's a lot to like there, but there's also just the fundamental baseline questions of the size. And I I also struggle with some of the discourse around Forbes, I think, Anthony, because there are people that try to tell you that his size wasn't an issue last year. And I just don't see it that way. Like, I watched DJ Moore push him away and go, yeah, if that dude weighed more, it'd be harder to push him. Like, would you rather push a piece of paper out of your way or a boulder? You'd rather push the piece of paper. Why? Because it's lighter. Force equals mass times acceleration. If the mass is not as heavy, you don't need as much force to accelerate it away from you. His weight matters. It's a physical sport. And not to mention, yes, there is other stuff that maybe is a bigger deal. His lack of physicality, specifically. But he also is pushed easy because he doesn't weigh a lot. And I just... I don't know why it's so hard for people to admit that. And it's maybe he can learn to overcome it. He did in the SEC, but like I truly don't understand why it's so hard for people to say that or what they're seeing. I mean, prior to drafting him, even, you know, after we drafted him and the season that he had last year, I'm confused as to why, you know, people would be, you know, reluctant to actually just admit to him. We, we've seen DJ Moore. We've seen A.J. Brown. We've seen these bigger receivers, like, he try to guard. And, you know, he's at a disadvantage to an extent just because of how small he is. Like, the weight thing, I think everybody, you know, made it an emphasis, like, during camp, be, before he was drafted. And it's still, you know, something that's going to be brought up now, like, with this new coaching staff. If I tried to pass rush Trent Williams, I guarantee you someone would be like, he's not – he, he, he's not physical enough. It's not the weight. He's just not physical enough. It, it'd be the weight. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm also not strong enough uh, and fast enough and twitchy enough to pass rush on Trent Williams, for instance. But uh, part of the problem with that, the strength component, would be because I don't weigh enough. Like, it's just, it's physics. It's math. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the math. I'm mad at math all the time. It's also mad at me. It's a running theme on the show. Uh, at Wee's Ten Toes Down, seventy five fifty nine says, "What a what a uh, name that one is." A skill set like Forbes needs to be on the field, and if these coaches are good as as good as advertised, they will have Forbes playing his best football. My question is: is like, what is Emmanuel Forbes' best football? 
And th this does get into the rest of it, right? So the weight is definitely a part. If Emmanuel Forbes magically could put on 20 pounds, he would instantly be fine. And this does get to all the other stuff that people talk about in terms of his anticipation, which we see this play yesterday in OTAs or whenever it was in OTAs where Deami Brown scores a touchdown on him on a scramble drill situation where if he just gets his head around, it's probably a pick. And it's just, you got to realize what's happening. His recognition, which was so good in college and just seems to have died. And so I do wonder if they're going to be able to get his eyes in the right place and thus fix his feet and thus fix his game. But just because you showed a skill set in college doesn't mean that it's automatically going to translate into the NFL. And so this idea that if Emmanuel Forbes were to fail, it'd be on the coaches. No, it, I would, in fact, put it the opposite. If Emmanuel Forbes fails, it's on Emmanuel Forbes because we're pretty sure these coaches are damn good. If everybody fails, then yeah. And it's always going to be a some mix of both, figuring out what his learning style is and how to reach him and whatever. But you can't reach someone who doesn't want to be reached. And so if Emmanuel doesn't dedicate himself to doing the things that he's told to do, which is what Rivera's staff would tell you happened last year. I don't. I just think they're bad teachers. But if if Forbes doesn't dedicate himself, then that ain't that ain't on the coaches. That like, that's on that's on Emmanuel. Yeah, and also he's sort of been given two two clean slates. You know, we had a, a coaching staff last year, then we get a new coaching staff this year to reevaluate everybody. So I think it's definitely going to be more on Emmanuel if you know things don't turn around. For sure. Yeah, like you said, they uh, they reset the defensive back staff in the middle of last year, and the results were pretty much the same. Uh, and I took a little video at OTAs, and like of receiver drills and some quarterback drills, and these comments are for purely for entertainment purposes only. Ready? I'm ready. Uh, at SV Low Key says, number one had legs all over the place and lacking some pop. Number 89 was firing on all cylinders. Uh, Justin Evans, 182. 89 had the best rep, followed by 10 to me. I have a question. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> it's a warm-up drill. It's fun. Love seeing the intensity. Love this. I'm not telling you not to enjoy it. But if you're breaking down film of a warm-up drill and you come out thinking that Kaz Allen and Bryce and Tremaine are better than Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. Like, I want you to say that sentence out loud and then go, what am I doing with my time? I I love the enthusiasm. Please keep watching our videos. Keep watching the shorts. Uh, keep You guys love the, film, the, the, the practice content. I'm going to keep giving it to you. I got a couple more videos on my phone right now that I might post up today. But uh, it's a warm-up drill. And that's okay. That's okay. That's am I being too snarky here? Nah, I, I think uh, the fact that you were laughing as I read the comments, I think, made me feel better about yeah. doing this. Also, I thought number ten was Tressway. I forgot he's sharing numbers with Kaz Allen. That'd be funny. That that, that, that <laughs> video would do numbers. That, bro. That's who I thought it was. I was like, what Tress would is be, out there running? What would be the funniest position group for Tress to work in with? A wide receiver drill would be pretty funny. He's out there. He's like, because Tressa kind of has like the wild, the wobble waddle as he runs. So to like, get out there, ah, shaking down, getting out. A running back drill for the same reasons would be funny. Yeah. What were you going to say though? I would want to say quarterback just because then we can really use him on special teams. Like he can really. Uh, this is not for function, Anthony. This is I'm, for comedy. Okay. I literally, the question was, what is the funniest drill for Trustway to be in? Well, go over there with the linebackers then. That is the correct answer. I go. do believe, hey, Trust, we need you to turn, hit, turn, run, and hit. That would be, I could just imagine him out there. What's the, what's his pet saying that he always says? Uh, oh, this kill. He's like, oh, it's not all oh, shucks, but someone's going to leave a comment on our never read the comments here yeah. uh, with with what it is. Slash, I'm definitely going to go watch that video in the break of him mic'd up last year. Um, but yeah, he, Tress with linebackers, that would be that would be outstanding. Um, perhaps the biggest comment uh, collector of the week was the segments we did on Ted Leonsis and his interest in the Nationals, uh, both the segment that we did, Anthony, and the interview with Clinton Yates. And um, 
If you're over at Monumental Sports right now, you might want to plug your ears for this. Or you might want to open your ears, actually, because before you pursue anything else, I think it's important to realize where you stand in the community. And not that YouTube is always the best representation of the community. In fact, it's basically the worst representation of the community. Well, that and Twitter. Twitter might be worse. That's actually, that could be a fun, a fun topic. Um, but... The the reviews for Ted Leontis are not good on our in our YouTube uh, comment section. Ted Leontis is a trash owner and is not good for Washington sports. Writes wonderful Faison. She's wonderful and yet trash. Uh, I want to win and I don't see him bringing a lot of winning here for the Wizards specifically and the Caps and Mystics to a lesser degree due to recent championship runs only. I will say, in defense of Ted Leonsis, a sentence that I do not say often, in defense of Ted Leonsis, to say, except for those championships, is a bit of a cheap shot. The Wizards have been managed horrendously for two decades. Uh, the Capitals arguably could have won more with Alex Ovechkin. Uh, the Mystics, I think, have had a lot of bad luck. I think they've actually been managed pretty well. Alana Deladon's been hurt a lot in key situations. Um, it's not like they've had bad rosters. Mike Tebow's very good at his job. Um... Uh, however, just to throw out the the championships and be like, well, except for those, um, a little bit, a little bit unfair, I do think for Leonsis. I want to bash the Wizards and the way they've been run. At this point, I think he'd actually agree with you. Uh, did that, you but, yeah. Did you know today was the uh, anniversary of the nineteen and thirty one Nationals? Or I guess uh, the Nationals when they actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Today is that day. Oh, and I thought that was in June, but okay. 1931. 1931. Hey, the Mystics in their own four start. Maybe they're on their way to the championship. Hey, say starts it ain't tonight so. in Phoenix. Uh oh. Let's, let's go. Uh, nothing but the Blues. Leonces isn't a good owner. Keep him away from the Nats. Old school three points. He seems to be a better human than Dan, but it should be a quote unquote Leonces law for him to not have anything to do with another team before the Wizards make a play in appearance. Yikes. Uh, Kevin Hardy, 4028. What Ted never communicated is that he has a love for baseball, just a love for revenue. No thanks. And River, or, uh, two more. Riverdale Kings, 5660. One man owning a lot of things is dangerous. And OG Log 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 L. Okay. Uh, all my homies hate Ted Leonsis. I just think that there's a lot of factors here that push into. What's going on? Look, if the Wizards turn this around under Winger and Dawkins, Pete Leonsis' approval rating will go up. But I do think it's important to kind of take the temperature of the city on this stuff. And the city, the region. And when you see what Leonsis tried to do with Virginia, how that fell apart, um, you see him seemingly after revenue at a lot of different turns, which is his right as a business owner. But when the winning isn't there, like people don't want you to expand. And, and I think that... When you have these public trusts, and this is why I always appreciate the way Josh Harris has talked about the commanders. When you have these things that are essentially public trusts, that matters. I also do think the, functionally speaking, I would not want, if I'm the city, for Leonces to have any more leverage over me. And that's not personal to Ted. I wouldn't want Josh Harris to have any more leverage over me. He's got his one team that's got a lot of power. That's good enough. Um, I wouldn't want Ted. I wouldn't want anybody. I, w I just simply do not want to be at the mercy of any singular business or billionaire with that much control over something that matters so much to people. And so I, I, that's the point I made, which which is echoed there. Um, but also, Leonsis, I think, fails to explain why it's actually good for fans that he owns a yet another team, which goes to the last comment on this, which is from Peter Van Dixhorn 8407 Um Really good point. I love the games on Monumental, but don't need Ted to own the team. And again, if you're a business owner and you own multiple businesses, they can interact, but you also can operate in the best interest of the individual businesses. And if Monumental, what what it would be or what would be best for Monumental would be for them to have Nationals games and those rights become available, whether Ted owns the team or not, he should do that, pursue that for monumental as in the network that that doesn't matter who owns the team like you got to you got to do what's best for for the the programming and and for that individual business entity that's your responsibility as a business owner which Ted knows cuz he's a very 
uh, experienced business owner. Uh, then we got some we got some fun ones uh, to wrap up. Uh, and one just quick quick palate refresher before we get into a uh, more a topic with more meat on it. Uh, Mob CCR says back to the Commanders. I'm hoping that Luke McCaffrey will end up as good as Jordy Nelson was for the Packers. Anthony, why do you think he made that comparison? Uh, because he's white. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. <laughs> I think I think this this commenter was like, "Who's the best white wide receiver I can think of?" That's like bulky though, and like strong. Because I think there's a whole bunch of like white receivers that are like small and quick. They usually like play in the slot. You got yeah. I mean, Battle credit man, to him if he he was able to think about that depth beyond just oh, white he's a dude. white man. Yeah. <laughs> But you want to know what? I, I just. Isn't his dad in the Hall of Fame? Luke, Luke McCaffrey's? Yeah. Isn't Ed a Hall of Famer? I think so. Yeah. Why would you pick Jordan Jordy Nelson over? Maybe he just didn't want to get too lofty. He's like, ah, oh, everyone's going to say, I hope he's as good as Ed. Yeah. I'm going to go with Jordy Nelson. I'm going to I'm gonna half zig when everyone else is zagging. Maybe he thought this was one of those names that, like, we all forgot about. And now that he re-mentioned them. Oh, we, Jordy Nelson actually was really good with Yo, that. Yo, Jordy Nelson was sick. He was nasty. And his like, post routes, his post routes had, were insane. If he had had like another three, four years of production at his peak level, he's probably a Hall of Famer too. Them injuries, man. Yeah, he was sick. And then Devontae came in and was like, let me show you what I can do. And it's like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just thought that was a fun comment. I mean, I for the record... Although I think they're very different types of players. I don't disagree. I would love Luke McCaffrey to be as good as Jordy Nelson was because Jordy so Nelson too. was awesome. Now, Anthony, if I had told you there was one other big topic this week that that drew multiple comments on something we've done in the last week, what do you think it would be? Something we've done in the last week? Yeah. Uh, What's today? Thursday? Thursday. I'll even give you a hint. It was yesterday. Well, yesterday... Who did, who did we have on? Oh, we had JP. And what did we talk about to start? Pull-ups? Yeah. Pull-ups. Wow. So the people the people <laughs> want to know, the Black Health and Wealth Show, what's the over-under for JP's pull-ups? So if you missed it, the uh, genesis of this story started because someone in a mailbag on Take Command asked me if I could do more pull-ups than Logan. Logan and I tested, and we tied. He set the bar at 10 I thought I had done 11, but miscounted and did 10. He also thinks he could have done more. He just kind of not got bored, but was like, I don't feel like grinding out more pull-ups because then I'm just going to be sore and hurt, uh, And which was perfectly fine with me because that's also kind of why I stopped. So we got a, a solid old man 10 in. Uh, JP heard that conversation, and so he wanted to get his in. He said he thinks he can do five to six. So if he thinks he can do five to six, I would say the number's five and a half. That's the betting number for J.P. Finley pull-ups. Mm. And I think I would go with the under. Oof. But also, The fact that he's got a pull-up bar at home in his practice, <laughs> though, makes me think that maybe he's a, he's got a few more in him than we're giving him credit for. Maybe J.P.'s one of those people, and I hope he's listening, that, you know, buys a pull-up bar, stores it, it collects dust, and he never sees it again. He did make it sound like he uses it. So mm. I'm going to say five and a half is the number. I think we need to test it soon. Uh, but Curtis Walker, 3654, says the pressing questions now are, when do we get to see Ant do, quote unquote, at least 18 pull-ups? First of all, that was not what I said. I said at least 15. I said I've done 18, but I can at least do 15 easily. But I mean... <laughs> I was supposed to actually do this yesterday, and I forgot when I got home. Okay. I can, I can do this today. Are you just going to go to prep and, and do it? Yeah. Okay, remember, two-second, not necessarily like a true two-second, but like a one-two dead hang in between. If you need, I did take video of mine. Yeah. So if you need an example of like what the dead hang needs to look like, I can send you that. All right, and I just got to do 15, right? Because 18 nah, with a two-second dead hang. Now, well, it, you're the it, one who said eight. I, I haven't set a number for you at all. Okay. So well, I'll, I'll I, I want to I want to see if you can get to 18. <laughs> I'm not getting to 18 with a dead hang. If if the numbers okay, so the numbers then 14 and a half. You're saying over? Oh, that's a lot of pressure, Craig. I'll go over. I would actually take you over too. You're strong. 
I'll and go you're also, relatively speaking, compared to me and Logan. And like, I'm to be I'm clear, I'm guys. a lot closer to you than I am to Logan. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're light. You're I light and strong. Long arms, though, man. You do have long arms, which is does make it a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, real quick on the way out here, uh, at Brandon Hall fifty six fifteen is the newest subscriber to our Hoffman W Sports channel. That's right. We have a brand new YouTube channel just for our women's sports content, including a ton of exclusive content. We play sometimes like some fun clips and stuff here on the radio show. Sometimes, obviously, that is in full on our other digital platforms. But now we've got a home just for our spirit, Mystics, NWSL, U.S. Women's National Team, all that coverage. It's already actually kind of blowing up, which is amazing. But I thought this comment from Brandon Hall was hilarious, so I wanted to end it here. Uh, and... I've decided to be less trash as a footy fan and expand my interest into the women's side of things. I very much appreciate you all for helping get my knowledge level up to speed. Subscribed. So, Brandon, salute. Thanks for subscribing, and congratulations on being less trash. Uh, When we get back here on the Hoffman Show, an absolutely, speaking of trash, an absolutely trash take from two of the people who I think are the smartest talking about football at all of ESPN. That's next here on the Team 980. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.